Hennett short, Mateo literally sitting on the moon, Ramon <laughs> Arias playing second base. It was fun going to games again. It was fun feeling the energy of the yard. And I'm ready for the next step. They're all exciting pieces. And I mean, you could look at a lot of lineups this year and you could really feel good about the game. And I don't think we could say that for the last few years. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for a special opening day episode of the Talking Birdie podcast. It's episode number 82. It is, I am dubbing the Rubenstein episode because <laughs> our delightful Lord and Savior is here. The deal was completed yesterday, and uh, it really does feel like a new era has dawned in Baltimore. There is only one owner in MLB that's undefeated all time, so... <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! You're right. You are right, man. Yeah. Um, boys, it's been a little bit. The last time I talked to you, it was uh from Ed Ed Smith Stadium on my AirPods for a few brief moments. Yes. Um, how are we doing? We doing are well? well. We are well. Honestly, opening day kind of creeped up. Like I was, I saw like a tweet from the Orioles last week to like six more days till opening day, and I was like. Whoa! Yeah, and you're like, like what it's the here. Fuck? What? Yeah, yeah, it's it's already here. Um, yep. But I mean, I, I didn't get to go to the game today, obviously. But that that park looked like an absolute blast. Like the owners mm-hmm. were out there, just like taking selfies with people, buying people beers. Um, Ruben, dude, Steen they bought the everybody. Awesome. They bought everybody. At... Do you yeah. know how many people go to pickles on opening day? <laughs> <laughs> it's so many people. <laughs> All the pickles fans. But yeah, I mean, it was. It was. It looked like a blast on there. Like a sellout is always going to be pretty fun. But like you know, you had these guys out in the crowd and Rubenstein on the broadcast was was really go- cool to see. Um, there, some there Magna was, Carta stuff. There was another level to it with everything else. I mean, there was a different kind of buzz for many reasons. You know, obviously yeah. the lease was redone. We have new owners. Um, we were about to watch our new shiny toy Cy Young (laughs) winning pitcher start on opening day. And uh, I would say he delivered. You think? A little bit. A little bit. 11 Ks. Gave up two hits. (laughs) Six. Or one Six innings. He he gave up one hit. Yeah. No walks. Yeah. Absolutely nuts. But Brad, how have you been, buddy? Nothing new since we last touched base, man. Just going through the motions. <laughs> uh, just glad we're getting into the swing of things. Weather's warming up. Baseball season's here. Feeling the vibes. Softball's starting up, too. All that mm. good stuff. So, you know, here we are, man. I purposely, you, waited. I purposely waited until we were on here to ask you this, Brad. Uh, is, there any, is there any news on or updates on the golf cart incident? Uh, yeah, there is. They sent me a bill today, and oh, we can talk fuck. about that later. Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a golf oh, cart no. incident. Oh, I, bro- I broke a golf cart at Turf Valley. <laughs> what happened? <Yeah. laughs> How'd you break Just a golf cart? Zero, sp- zero spatial awareness whatsoever. I whacked it with my club. <laughs> Would you Just a little up? bit of plastic damage, honestly. Just oh, okay. it, like just some 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 body damage. Not like I didn't like crash it into anything. Yeah, that would be like fifteen thousand dollars if you had to replace a whole fucking golf cart. So <laughs> yeah, it's a good thing you didn't do that. One of the first yeah. times I went golfing with my buddies from high school, um, we were on hole eighteen, right in front of the clubhouse, and one of the guys on the cart was a little bit bigger, or actually both of them were a bit bigger. Um, and they did like some crazy, like hard 90 degree turn, flip the thing in front of the clubhouse and like somehow never, no damage was done. No one saw it. And they just like flipped it back over and they just kept driving. And it was like, man, idiots, complete idiots. So you didn't do that. So that's good. Yeah, it's true. Although I feel like it would have been better because if there was no damage, there was no damage caused. So. That's true. Brad, Maybe how much I is the just... bill for slight body damage? I mean, do you want me to say it on here or do you want me to say it afterwards? Is it an just say number? it. It's fine. Nobody <laughs> listens to this podcast. $467. Oh, for a my plastic God. Plastic body? Wow. Honestly, the way they were talking to me at first, I thought it was going to be closer to 1000 So, That's yeah, 467 
Because and the reason it was that low is because the labor was like half an hour. So, damn! Oh, wow, nice oh. job. <laughs> that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, Hell yeah! But Ryan, yeah. how are you, buddy? I'm okay, man. We're hanging in there. I'm happy baseball is back, though. No, yep. true. Just signifies other good things with this time of year. I'm into it. For yeah, sure. unfortunately, it means it's going to get hot as shit again. But not yeah, sure. <laughs> and the sixty-hour work weeks are about to start for me, and the ten-hour days of the ball fields on Saturdays. Oh yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Voluntary, <hours>. by the way. <laughs> I know, I know. It's probably my last year tournament ball. I'll still probably play the league ball next year, but we'll see how it goes. You say this year's the Brad Revenge Tour, right? A little bit of an off year last year with the yeah and the the team wrist. I'm on the team I'm on is pretty good so it's gonna be a battle for playing time so gonna have to uh, gonna have to show out for sure hmm. they picked up a lot of young studs <laughs> so yeah we so, had our first tournament we lost in the championship I had to miss half the games anyway because of work and then I only started two of the four games when I was there so it's gonna be a battle for some PT but team's pretty good and um. I did okay. Have had better days, had worse days. I was like two for four with a double and two walks. So it was okay. It was it, it was fine. It wasn't something that I walked away pissed off at or overly excited about. It was just whatever. <laughs> no bats tossed into the woods. That's a good sign. No, no, no. I don't really have the energy for that anymore, man. <laughs> which actually, which actually brings me to the next thing. So I, I kind of realized. I'm kind of dreading these long days at the fields this year, and I came to the conclusion it's because I'm la- I think I'm just lacking in energy now that I'm in, that I'm older. So I was like, all right, I got to figure out. I think I got to change my diet. So for the last like week or so, I've been eating straight up like oatmeal, banana, nuts, all that shit, and um, yeah, it's definitely uh, waking me up a little bit. <laughs> also, shitting my brains out a bit. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> That's a side effect of eating better every time. That all, na- that all natural yeah. shit right there. But we'll see. We'll see if that makes a difference in the energy levels long term. But it's slowly starting to pick up a bit, I feel like. So hopefully that makes a difference. That's good. Oh, yeah, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I was in Lancaster this week for a work trip. And um, the lighting, this is a long story, maybe. Not a long story, but we're going to get there. Okay. Uh, the lighting in the bathroom mirror was very, like overexposed so like i was changing in the mirror and it, like i just looked at myself and i was like dude you are like out of shape <laughs> like you could just see like <laughs> you could see like every every impression every abrasion i was like man this is not good and uh today at work i was like that was still pretty fresh in my mind and i'm driving around and i'm like i always get like a snack during the day usually um maybe it's like a little thing of donuts or something sometimes but i always get like a snack and i like looked in there i saw it and then i just remembered ryan telling me how much weight he lost <coughs> not eating sugar and i was like i shouldn't buy that donut so then i didn't so like you know you said that like eight months ago but it's still like just goes in there every now and then because you have such clear, great results I, mean, I didn't even mean not eating sugar i just meant not drinking sugar yeah exactly but i don't know. still I eat like ice cream it. and shit i just <laughs> just stopped drinking it that's good but you yes, had an impact on me today it's good i'm glad this fat guy could leave an impression on you josh <laughs> you know, in combination with a really overexposed mirror <laughs> in a hotel yeah. Yeah. that'll also do it yeah for sure but that's my that was my week <laughs> awesome okay uh, awesome awesome Brad, i went to my first oh, i went to my first pga tour event yes uh, tell me about that dude it was way way cooler than i even could have could have thought it was going to be it was so sick i've never seen a golf course just so immaculate really yeah, you're right this is one of the nicest courses probably in like the country but still wait where, where was it uh tpc sawgrass pond uh, Beach, beach jacksonville sweet yeah yeah it was it was it was pretty awesome man i walked over 10 and a half miles uh, that's good exercise. That's <laughs> really good exercise. That's good oh, exercise. Yeah. Watching golf is good exercise. Apparently, going to PGA events. Who'd have yep. thought? <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's because we it's because we picked a group and followed them. Mm. So who, like, are you, we who, just, are you, who are you following? Uh, it's Victor Hovland and uh, Patrick Cantlay. Okay, I know Cantlay. I don't know Hovland. Hovland won the FedEx Cup last year. He's like yeah. a young 
kind of up and comer who like just kind of came out of nowhere last year. He played really well at the Ryder Cup, and then like I said, he won the won the FedEx Cup back in uh, towards the end of the at the end of the PGA Tour season. Gotcha. But I liked Hovland, and he was like the only guy there because we went after the cut, and my guy is Justin Thomas, and he missed the cut because he played like dog shit on Thursday and Friday. <laughs> Spieth missed the cut too, so I had to like the only other guy that I really like really wanted to see was Hovland. Who won? So Scotty Scheffler. Oh yeah, huh. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, big shock. I know. Yeah, fucking white white tiger <laughs> over here. <laughs> Scotty learned how to putt, man. <laughs> the only thing holding him back from like new goat status was not being able to putt, and now he can putt all of a sudden. So. Hmm. Yeah, he's two events. He won two events in a row. He won the Arnold Palmer Invitational the week before that. He won the Players, which is the one I was at, and then he's leading after the first round of this current event. So, so do good golfers come out of like the New York City metro? That's where Scotty Scheffler's from. Is he is he from New York? Really, I did not know that. Uh, he grew up like in a suburb in New Jersey, but yeah, like New York City. I don't really think there's any sort of like hotbeds for golf like there is for like baseball and football and stuff. That's true. Yeah. Like Justin Thomas is from Kentucky. Um, I mean, there's some guys that are from Texas, but Texas is just a really big state. I would think I would think from the South, if anything, but I guess there's golf courses everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd say it leans towards like warmer states, but probably not as heavily as baseball or football does. Yeah, hey, like Hovland is Norwegian. He's from Oslo. What? Yeah. That's wild. Yep. Huh. I think he grew up here, though. He doesn't talk like he's Norwegian. Okay. But yeah. Huh. Norway. That's wild. Ludwig Oberg is like this new hot up and coming player, too. And he's from, I think, Sweden. Uh, fun There's... fact Victor Hovland. Uh, his residence is in the same town that Jackson Holiday's from. Wow. Oklahoma? Stillwater, yeah. Wow. Of all the places you could choose to live, Victor. Uh, yeah. In Oklahoma, he's like, he's like, nah, I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> he played golf at Oklahoma State, so interesting. Yes. He Go has Pops. the he has the OSU logo on his bag. I noticed that when we were following him. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Yep. Oh, now that we've made full circle here, um, Brad, did you get to watch much of opening day? Uh, pretty much the whole thing. The parts that I wasn't watching, I was game casting. So, yeah, obviously very impressed with what I saw out of Corbin Burns. The good players in the lineup did well. Uh, the guys at the bottom, I mean, yeah, Mateo had a double. Him and Arias were combined like one for six, though, so whatever. I'm st- it doesn't make me less excited to see Jackson Holiday, but I'm not expecting to see that until like July at this point, based off based now, off guys, how they roll. So speaking of Jackson Holiday, I know you're a little upset at Uncle Mike right now, and understandably so, but are you were you happy to hear from did you like hear any like the Rubenstein interviews or anything like that? Anything uh, like, like in the in the background, I don't really hear hear much of I I heard bits and pieces of what he was saying, but uh, I think this one was yesterday. Like when the new when the sale became official, it wasn't today. But he he made a point to say that like, yeah, I'm gonna let people do their thing. I'm just here to support them. Which I remember when the news first leaked that like they were possibly selling. I know you said you raised that as a concern. Uh yeah. Um, and that overall is a good thing. I, my stance on Elias, obviously, I've loved it for years. A plus drafting, A plus developing. Not happy with his MLB roster management. And actually, it's not. I can at least understand, even though I disagree, I can at least understand the logic of sending Holiday down. What really pissed me off is going out and signing Tony, Tony Kemp. Because you, yeah. you know he's going to play against, you know against right handers. I mean, mm-hmm. at this point, it's a requirement for him to have some garbage left handed bat on the Dude, bench. it feels like it feels like a bit. You I'm know, who drafted you, Tony like, Kemp. Michael and especially West. with him, and especially with him wearing number 12. Like it, like it just, yeah. it just feels like a door. Fraser really Kent. does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, give if you want to have Holiday down to get that extra year of service time, give Connor Norby a shot. I know he's not left-handed, but I don't give a shit. I mean, Tony Kemp's not going to produce, so <laughs> I'd rather see Connor Norby hit against right-hand righties 
and just see what yeah. he's got. I mean, he said the organizational record for hits in a, hits in a minor league season last year. And he's going into Norfolk year three last year, borderline top 100 guy. I'm not saying he's going to be a stud all-star or anything. I'm not even saying he's necessarily part of the future. But I would much rather see what we have out of him than Tony freaking Kemp. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I was kind of the quick same. Quick interruption. Quick interruption. Sorry. Go ahead. So you said Odor and Frazier and now Kemp, all number 12s. Uh, there yeah. was another number 12 in 2021. Any guesses? In 2021. And it, it fits the mold a little bit. Michael Franco? No. He was, he was five. three. Or three, yeah. Yeah, I'm not good with the numbers. Oh, Pat Valeka had to have been. Nope. Close, though. Wilkerson? Stevie Wilkerson was number 12. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. Anyway, continue. Yep. Um, I was going to say, I'm, I was the same way as you, Brad. I, I know everyone went torches and pitchforks when they sent holiday to the minors i was like eh. you know he did strike out a lot in spring training i know he had some big hits and everything but i was like eh, all right whatever and then but so in my head i was like cool westberg's the everyday second baseman this is fine. i don't I'm think happy I don't, with, yeah i'm happy with this well this is this is this was my thinking when holiday was first sent down yeah is what i'm saying yeah so i'm like eh, I'm, I'm fine with it whatever and then yeah we bring in and then, you know, and then I'm like, you know, Nevin gets, you know, DFA'd. Maton gets DFA'd. They release Wong. Colton Wong, you know, like, yeah. Like, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, same, same. <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's go. We're, we're switching it up a little bit. And then it's, and nope. then they drop the Tony Kemp hammer on us. <laughs> the day before. The day before. And that's why I'm saying it feels like a bit. <laughs> yeah. Because Eli- Elias was like, oh, you thought I forgot? <laughs> wow. There you go. Dude, dude, <laughs> dude, I honestly think there is an element of that to this. It. I really do. It sounds it sounds ridiculous, but like, why? Like, why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, he's trolling. Like, it, yeah. <laughs> it just feels it's like he's trolling. Hilarious. There, there is a requirement to have a <clears throat> shitty left-handed hitting veteran bat on this team, and he's gonna start most of the games against right-handers. You know he will. Yeah, we'll see, man. I mean, like with Holiday in spring, like you said, Ryan, he struck out a lot. He didn't make it impossible for them to demote him. Like we've seen that in the past. Yeah, he made a decent case, but he didn't. Yeah, he, he didn't, didn't make it impossible make it to where right. he was like, you know, six home runs, like, you know, 1.5 OPS in spring. Like that would have made it pretty difficult to justify, um, even though spring stats don't matter at all. But that would be like, OK, <laughs> but yeah, I think if, he had like a two walk to 15 strikeout ratio. I mean, he still had like an 800 plus OPS, I think. But, um, you know, just not quite enough. And they'll call him up later in the year, I'm sure. It's just, yeah. you know, we can get the year out of him, so we will. I think at this point – go ahead. Yeah, I'm no. thinking at this point July because, I mean, obviously the rule is that they keep him down until, like, I don't know the exact date, but somewhere around the end of April, early May, he's eligible for that extra year. But if he finishes top two in rookie of the year, then he automatically gets that year of service time. So now at this point we... – now at this point – uh, you got to prevent him from finishing top two. <laughs> I just messed up, but I just don't think it's service time. I don't. This we are just dripping with money right now, dude. I, I don't think, think it's because he's twenty. Yeah, I think he's just a kid. I mean, years past, yeah, I'd agree. It's all about service time. It's all about getting as much out of him as you can before they walk out the door. But where things are different now, we have so we much. Think, money. We think we we think we think it's different. Um, I mean, dude, he didn't buy the team to do the same thing Angelos did. There's just, there's just no, especially he's talking about like being a steward for the game, like for the team. Like it, he hasn't outright said it, but this man was ready to spend some fucking money. Michael Bloomberg is worth ninety four billion dollars. Okay, yeah, but he only he only owns like a small stake in the team. I'm wondering how much he's actually gonna. Bloomberg is actually going to contribute to it. I don't really know the logistics of how that works, but I don't either. You're and to be fair, you're 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 right, but you don't you don't buy a team to just maintain status quo is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Peter and another... Andrews, and, and Peter and John were an exceptional like you know exception to the rule of of sports ownership. Like, there's only a handful of baseball owners that were as ridiculously frugal as those guys were because even the small money like i'm thinking you know arizona you know they don't have a whole lot of money to work with but they already signed corbin carroll they went and got erod they got 
Jordan Montgomery. Um, the Pirates made three extensions in the last two years. Uh, yeah, that's Pirates. They yeah, don't do, that's a, yeah, that's a perfect one. Those guys never spend money. So, yeah, those guys were an extreme exception to the rule. As we said, we've said it before on here plenty of times, nobody's expecting for them to go out and dole out $300, $400 million contracts every time free agency rolls around. But, I mean, at the bare minimum, you would expect yeah. them to be locking up the guys that we want to keep around for a long time. I, I would expect some of these guys to get extended. I don't think all of them will get extended. I think we may No, just... and, and I wouldn't expect that either. But yeah. your cornerstone guys, Gunner, Adley. Yeah. Holiday. Holiday, perhaps. Yeah. I think Gunner um, and Holiday are going to be tough, so we'll see. I, I mean, hopefully. Did you see the Will Smith extension, though? Adley's price tag just went down. Yeah, 10 years, 140. Yeah, and it was like half deferred too. Oh, well, they're so not going to defer it. But plus Adley's older, isn't he? Was he twenty six, twenty seven now? I think Will Smith got like a year on him or two. Well, I mean, like older than the other. Oh yeah, for sure. On our team. Yeah, he's like so, twenty six, I think, this year. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I mean, I was talking about like two hundred fifty million for Adley, and there's, there was no way that was going to happen. No ever. shot. No. No. Certainly not. He'll be a DH in like four years anyway. I mean, two hundred fifty million. You got to be OPS OPSing in the nine hundreds at least minimum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. And Adley's a good hitter, but he's not a nine hundred OPS hitter. Will Smith is twenty nine years old. And he got how many? Ten year, and he got ten years. Ten years. Yeah. They did wow. the same thing it's, as the, the Otani the contract, Dodgers, though. The Dodgers don't care, dude. That dude, that dude, <laughs> that dude's knees are going to be shot at age thirty nine. Oh yeah. <laughs> But they did the same uh, thing as the Otani yeah. deal, where they, you know, split it. So you know, later in his deal, he'll get more money. But on the front end, like you know, when they're in win now mode, they're going to have, you know, pretty minimal salaries for everybody. Yeah. By yeah. the time uh, the they Dodgers... literally just put it on the credit card. I mean, yeah. By the time the Dodgers have to start paying Otani sixty-eight million dollars a year, sixty-eight million is not going to be worth as much as it is now. Not even close. No. Yeah. Nope. But. By then, Otani will have moved out of California, and, and he won't be having, and he won't be having sixty percent of it stolen by the government of the state of California. Well, yeah, and also he doesn't care because he's getting that mo- all that money in endorsements and more. Yeah. So. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, before we yep. moved on from the holiday subject, um, you might remember when Gunner first got called up, like they made him really prove it in AAA, like nine hundred plus OPS, um, for majority of twenty twenty two. And uh, then they called him up, like, in the Cleveland series. But uh, Holiday only got in, like, 18 games as a 19-year-old last year there, uh, 800 OPS. So, I mean, like, that's good for a 19 – that's really good for a 19-year-old, deserving of top prospect. But um, they're going to make him prove it down there, I think, first, like they did with Kowser, like they did with Westberg, like they did with Gunner, like they did with Adley. Mountcastle, same thing. It's clearly the model. Mayo, too. Mayo's got to prove, yeah. Norby, Mayo, <laughs> Stowers can't buy his way out of Norby. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Norby kind of, like I said, Norby broke the organizational record for minor league hits in a season last year in AAA. Um, yeah, he doesn't have the ceiling that other guys do, but I mean, yeah, I'd rather I'd rather give him a look than fucking Tony Kemp. But oh, absolutely. About it. Yeah, I didn't know he broke the record for. Minor league hits in a season. I'm I'm 99 sure about that because I definitely read it. He had so 164. I, I'd have to I'd have to verify that, but I definitely read it like a couple different places. So, hmm. yeah, I, I mean, I would much dude. rather see him get a look up there. I mean, Tony Kemp, what is that? Even like over Mateo, I know he's got speed, but um, you got to see what you got with guys like that. Like you know what you got in Mateo. Um, you know we have. Some pretty fast guys on the roster, I'd say. Like Mateo, like plays a role, but I don't know. Norby is just—it's just cool to see that stuff. Um, we'll say Ortiz and Hall made the Brewers roster. Just wanted to throw that out there. Hall is their number two starter in their rotation. Wow, he's starting tomorrow. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope he does well, man. Yeah. Same. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it would have been cool uh, to see him as a starter here, but it just doesn't wait, make any the- sense. Uh well no he's not starting tomorrow because they got rained out today so he'll be starting Saturday uh, I guess but yeah he's their number two starter like he's listed yeah. there for tomorrow okay yeah, what's kind of funny too is with these injuries to start the year in the rotation Hall probably would have had a shot uh yeah over, yeah over Irvin probably mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah. So who's the rotation then? Is it so it's right now it's Burns, Rodriguez, probably Kramer? Kramer, Kramer Wells, Irvin. Wells, Irvin. Okay. Oh, it is Wells. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wells always has amazing first halves. And then in the second half, his arm will fall off. And then we'll get him back next year. That's how it'll go. And yep. so it'll be good until John Means is here. And then Bradish will have at the end of the year. And then Irvin can go away. And then we'll be pretty solid rotation. Yeah. I'm really nervous about this Bradish thing, man. Um, I don't like that two of our core starters are like not all, reliable right now. But. All reports say he's doing extremely well. I, okay. I don't. I don't. I don't know why you'd be super concerned. I when it first came out, for sure. But uh, because they're any, saying any, he's looking really good. Anytime a pitcher has like a UCL sprain, <laughs> and then they say, "Oh, he doesn't need Tommy John surgery. He's just going to try to pitch through it." I feel like I can't think of many examples of where that ever works. <laughs> yeah, out. yeah. We actually I talked. Agree. We actually talked about this with Nick last time uh, when you were at the game, Ryan. And he's, I, I think you said Tanaka was an example. Masahiro yeah. Tanaka. I was um, actually still in, in but, when he said that, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if he put up, like, his best numbers that year. He might have done okay. I'd have to pull it up. I don't know what year it was. So it's tough to say. But I do yeah. remember him having that arm problem. I mean, I ho- hopefully everything's fine. Hopefully it's just uh, not a great success rate in the past. Yeah, because, because our rotation at full health is scary good, man. <laughs> it's like, playoff ready, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like we could win 100 games again if all those guys are healthy relatively quickly. And mm-hmm. I will, obviously I want to see that. If that doesn't happen, I mean, I think I, I got us – like what we're at right now, I got us winning around 90 games because I think we're going to regress a little bit just in the sense that Radish, well, Burns offsets Bradish, obviously, more than offsets Bradish. But then you got the back end of the rotation is not as good. And then you got Felix Batista's out for the season. I don't have that much confidence in Craig Kimbrell. I really don't. Um, I hope he does well. But he struggled at the end of last year. And from what I saw in spring training, I th- which, okay, straight stats don't matter, but he did get rocked a few times. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, just, a little, I'm a little worried about I'd just like to point out he pitched, he pitched in one of the games I was there, and he looked pretty good. Okay, well, that's good. Um, <laughs> also, I don't think we're going to go 10-3 and three versus Toronto this year. I don't think we're going to go the whole regular season without getting swept. So it's going to be hard to win 101 games again this year. But hopefully we can do it. It's no easy task. I mean, I think. John Means is the opportunity of two years in a row, I will say, um, to like really change the outlook on the rotation. Cause like it's last year, we thought it'd be like almost like a free agent type signing or like a trade type thing where right. you just come in second half. And uh, we only got him for three starts, but he was good in those three starts. I'll oh, he was that. amazing yeah. in those three. I would just love to see him get like a good work of a season here because it's been a few years. But like when he was healthy, he was really good. Yeah. If he pitches anywhere close to how he did in those three starts, as a back end of the rotation guy, that would be sick. Like we're we're winning the division again. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is his seventh year in the league. He's only he's only done six starts since 2022, though. Uh, but career uh, 122 ERA plus. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. So excited to have that. Hopefully, work out. But can't rely on it. Nope. But yeah. Any other thoughts from opening day? I mean, it was kind of funny because we scored 11 runs, but I think we only hit two balls with any kind of velocity because all of the RBI hits were like little bloop singles over the infielders. <laughs> I you mean, know, I just, the way it uh, goes sometimes, man. Yeah, I yeah. just think we got, I mean, we're one for one so far. We have kind of a weak schedule to start out the season, similar to how we did last year. So we got to take advantage of these bum teams and at least take two out of three from like all of, all of them. them. And maybe sweep one. So, like, I I haven't looked past the first three, but I know it's uh, Angels, Royals, Pirates. So Tigers uh, are hope- after the Pirates. Oh no, that's okay. Pittsburgh. Okay, so hopefully at least six and three in the first nine games. But like, if we, I mean, us- the whole month of April, I think is pretty easy breezy for the Orioles. So like, we could finish like with a really good record. Um, I think things get a little tough in May though. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, same the same thing the same thing we had last year I guess so all right so Brad you have us at do you have us at you have us around 90 wins or do you actually have us at just, 90 and 72 I'll put me at 90 and 72 just put it this way I did not bet on the 
over for the Orioles win total this year. So what was the what was the line set up? So it was originally at ninety three and a half when we got Burns. I think it closed at ninety and a half today with you know Bradish being out mm-hmm. and um all the other things I mentioned. And I think <laughs> I think the books probably anticipated holiday too. Um so yeah, it, it ended up at ninety point ninety and a half before the and before you took on, you pitch. took the under on that. Oh, I did. I, I didn't take the under. I just didn't touch it. You just didn't touch it. Okay, interesting. Did you see I what did, Fangraphs I, had our projected wins at for this year? Is I it saw, more? Fa- is it more Fangraphs nonsense? It is Fangraphs nonsense. Okay, eighty-four wins. Yeah, okay, <laughs> isn't that crazy? All right, yeah, that, all that, right, that. all right, Mister Mariners fan, calm down. <laughs> they absolutely hate the Orioles. <sighs> they do. They they do. Do. Yeah, that's 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 a little ridiculous. Like we added an ace pitcher. We have a top prospect. We have guys going like maturing into their second and third. Lost and absolutely years. no one of value. Lost no one of value and added Burns and Kimbrell. And like we lost Batista, I guess. Batista, but yeah. Temporary. But 84 wins. You want us to drop down <laughs> like that many? That's yeah. that's crazy. That's, that's what they want. It's not what they think is gonna happen, it's what they want to happen. Yeah. They're speaking negativity over us. Yep. Uh, trying to think anything else that happened today. Trout home run. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? I want Trout to have a good year, man. Everyone like writes him off on Twitter and everything. They're like, oh yeah, he's just old and washed up. And it's like, no, he's just been hurt. <laughs> like when he he's plays, he's the, really okay, good. Yeah, when he, play, when he plays, he's, he's good. only the best hitter to ever live. <laughs> Literally. And he, you know, Burns made one mistake. First at bat of the year, dead center. gone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Left center, I guess, but. Um, I don't know. I want him to be good. He almost robbed that Mullins home run. He's yeah. very close. He certainly tried. Looked like young Trout for a second there. I had uh, sorry, I had JJ ahead. Hardy visions in my head when he was going back on that ball. <laughs> I was I over. Think they at referenced my, yeah, it. They I did. was I was at my grandmother's for dinner, and my grandmother watches every Orioles game, but her commentary on it is always ridiculous. Boomer she, commentary. She, well, she well she gets obviously she gets pissed off when they lose. That's normal. But like when they're winning, she's like, "Oh, I feel so bad for the other team." Uh, and then <laughs> on that Mullins home run, Trout missed it. She's talking about how bad she feels for Trout. I'm like, you need to stop. <laughs> that, that guy's that guy's got a four hundred million dollar contract. He's the first ballot Hall of Famer. There is absolutely no reason for you to feel bad. <laughs> Besides his team absolutely pissing themselves every time okay. they play baseball. <laughs> yeah, well, he chose to extend with them, so what He did, yeah. He, he, he'll yeah. still live his best life. He just won't win a championship. They're so my bad, mom man. Is, my mom is kind of the same way. Like, she used to, so when I, like, when I lived at home, me and my dad hated Ryan Flaherty. We just oh, yeah. he was we just such a he was just such a bum. Like me and we felt the same way about him as you know Brad does with like Frazier and Odor and stuff. He just was, despises he was, him. He was worse than Frazier. Yeah, just won him off the team. Just can't stand him every time we see him. So we were the, we were like that. I mean, every time we watch the games, we talk about we talk shit about Flaherty, and it, it got to a point where we just did to wind my mom up because she was just like she's like stop being mean to him. Like like he can hear us, you know. <laughs> That's good. Stuff. And then when. I was I was at my parents' house when that uh, Mount Castle hit that home run against the Twins, and uh, Ref Snyder went <laughs> like full send into the wall. Yeah, and we were like, me and my dad were both like in tears, laughing. And she's like, <laughs> she was like, stop! He could have gotten hurt, and I was like, yeah, but he didn't. So, <laughs> <laughs> and they drew a body outline on yeah. the wall the next day. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. good. That was excellent. It's very good stuff. I'm now trying to look at because I was like, oh, is Ryan Flaherty a number 12 as well? But no. Three. That year, he, uh, he Alexi stuck, Casilla was our number 12. It felt like he stuck around for forever for how bad he was. He's on the Buck, team for like, Buck, Buck liked his guys, man. Yes. He was on the team for like five years. He's, it feels like longer than that, but that could just be because of how much I hate him. I think in 2012, uh, through, six years. Say, so 2012 through 17, then? Uh, 12 through 17, yeah, six years. Amazing, yeah. I'm impressed that you knew that, Brad. Well done. I just I remember. I just remember always commenting like, "How? How? How is he still guy? here? <laughs> like it's it's normal for there to be bum players on teams for like a year, maybe two, but like Flaherty, <laughs> a bench player for six. I mean, it's, come on. It's weird he played in Cleveland end his career. I didn't know that. 
And there was, I, I knew so many people that were like, oh, he's one of the most important players on the team because he can play anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Any, like almost any minor league baseball player can play like pretty much any position defensively. That's my stance. <laughs> so that is not valuable. Like yeah, any, any not. professional player can change positions. I mean, some can do it better than others, but even the bad defensive players are going to make most plays. I mean, they just are. So I don't give a shit if he can play every single position on the field. If he can't hit for shit, he's worthless. Yep. So. Mateo. Yeah. Worthless. Yeah. Is Mateo more likable than Flaherty, though? Yeah. I think so. I mean, I I don't hate him as much as you guys, but I do recognize that he's not a good hitter, and I'm not going to be sad when he goes. <laughs> I do like I do value base stealing and all that. Like I think if he was utilized properly and not starting so much, and they used him strictly, you know, start one day a week and pinch run and maybe be a defensive replacement, then I think that would be a proper utilization of Mateo. But the, I think I think even I would hate him a lot less if that's what they did. But the Orioles almost play it like it's rec ball and want to give guys even playing time. So yeah, like it's not fair that he's not playing. Yeah, like you don't want to hurt his feelings. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know who I yeah. forgot was on the team until he came up to bat today? Mm. Austin Hayes. <laughs> he looks so bad in that first at bat. He had a, a hit later and everything, but like I totally forget that he's like not that great of a player on our team. But he's like above replacement level, but he's not like you know, I'd almost rather see Kerstad and Stowers <laughs> out there. Yeah. But... I mean Kerstad Hayes... for sure. Hayes has had his hot streaks where he's been really, really good, but then he always like gets banged up and then tries to play through it and then regresses to shit. Well, Jim Palmer said it best today. <laughs> it was kind of like a funny roast. I don't think he meant it that way, but he was like, you know, Austin Hayes' numbers at the end of the year would look really good if he learned how to play like two good halves. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he started the All Star game last year, Austin Hayes. Oh, yeah. The- First half of the season, so the last two years, he's been he's been great. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then, yeah, well, I think both times he's had some kind of nagging injury that he plays through, and he does not do it very well. Yeah, like two years ago, it was like the wrist thing, and then this year it was like a leg thing, I think, or something. He just was never any good. He had like a 320 average at the All-Star game, and he ended up with like a 275. Like that's a big, big regression for a guy who plays every day. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, he played in one hundred and forty-four games last year. Yeah, I would have liked to see him get traded mm-hmm. in the off season so we could make room for a first dad. But I'm man, gonna the guess t- this the, is the his t- last year's an Oriole. Uh yeah, probably Cedric Mullins too. Potentially, I mean, they got to make room for these guys somehow. And Mullins, like, what kind of extension would you want to give him? He's already kind of like, what's he, 30, 31 or something like that? 29. No, he's only 29. It doesn't feel like it. Considering they drafted Enrique Bradfield, granted, we'll see how he hits this year. I would guess that their plan is for Bradfield to eventually take over and set it. The reason that we need to get rid of Mullins is so that we can – so that uh, Rubenstein can make his first big move and bring Juan Soto to Baltimore. Mm. Hmm. I don't see it happening, but it, <laughs> Me neither. it'd be fun. It'd be fun. <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. Outfielders. It's just trying to see if there's any like interesting names. There's like with the prospect situation, there's there's only three outfield spots, but none of not a lot of the prospects have really like made a huge case like holiday did or henderson did for the infield roles like we're so packed on the infield uh curse um, that i'd say curse that kind of but did. they're more corner outfielders though you uh, know like when we're talking about mullins like he's kind of immune to that stuff like no center fielder has come up besides like bradfield is going to but he's not there yet like judd fabian dylan beavers uh Rhodes, yeah. like those guys are corner guys who will be up here some someday maybe but i don't know i mean i don't i don't know if fabian or rose ever will play for those just just maybe just just maybe yeah maybe maybe they could like get a spell as like a fourth outfielder type i don't know but yeah see what you can do they're obviously behind like kowser herstad i don't even really know where they're gonna play i think they project mayo's the third baseman 
I guess. I, I mean, maybe corner outfield, but he's been playing third all through the minors for the yeah. most part. So, yeah. Speaking of fourth outfielders, um, hey, Josh. I know. Oh, boy. <laughs> I know. I know. I <laughs> said, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. No room for my buddy here, but, uh, you know, I, I wish him the best on whatever team he ends up on. I'm sure someone will pick him up. He's an ideal fourth outfielder, so I'm sure some, like, 81 win team is probably going to pick him up 500 team maybe, um, the, maybe the royals yeah maybe they start the him maybe the tigers yeah. pick him up i don't know we'll see something like that pirates could probably use him i don't know but you know it just didn't it wasn't gonna last forever so you know it's over now the fans are happy but i'm a little heart hurts a little bit but he'll be all right we are all happy you're the only one that's not <laughs> i know I had an irrational guy who was my guy, and I got his number 65 jersey hanging in the closet. But, you know, it is what his it is. Wrong, his wrong number jersey, because he changed it right after you got it. Yep, like a week later. Yep. yep. Okay. Had... Ryland Bannon was my guy, and he's never really took off. So, Yeah, he actually had a decent little spring with the Mets. Uh, I don't yeah, know if you I saw I, that. I, well, I did, yeah. I did uh, – search his name on X and I did see one Mets fan like constantly begging you need to put <laughs> Bannon on the roster Bannon, Bannon and then Bannon gets reassigned no <laughs> I mean my guy I mean the Mets suck I'd like to see him get a shot uh I mean he was with the Astros last year so it's not surprising he didn't get much offer I think he got six at bats last year anyway. <clears throat> yeah I mean the Mets gave Zach Short a roster spot I guess he had like a monster spring so Bannon was like the 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 Nick Maton of their spring almost. Well, hardly Maton, knew you, Nick. Maton didn't even he didn't even get a hit. Spring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't record yeah. a hit. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Which I'm thankful for. Yeah, me too. But I mean, we have Tony. Tony counts better than Maton, but he still sucks. <laughs> okay. Let me see uh, something. I just want to. I want to. Hold on. Just just hang on. There's an article about the Mets signing Ryland Bannon to a minor league deal, and there's a quote at the in the headline: "Maybe we can finish above the Nats." <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, oh, it's, hopefully, oh. at some point, Bannon gets a call up due to some injury, and he uh, gets at least somewhat of a shot on a team that's not expected to contend this year. Oh, that's speaking of for. people in the Machado trade, like who expected Dean Kramer to still be here in 2024? <laughs> Like if you remember, like twenty, well, what year did he come up? Twenty twenty. Yeah, he struggled at first. He struggled. He for, struggled for like two years, and he's yeah. now he's like our third starter for at least the time being. Yeah, Didn't think he he'd a, still be here. He was a good middle of the rotation guy last year, so hopefully yeah. he can repeat that. I think his goal this year was uh, two hundred and fifty innings. So you know that'd be nice. Did he really say that? I think he said that. Yeah, <laughs> that seems like a really lofty goal. Not a lot of guys do that anymore. Um, like I remember a few guys in the past used to do like 350. <laughs> like James Shields was like the last guy to do anything over 300, I think. 200 is like usually the benchmark for, oh, that's kind of a lot of innings. Uh, maybe so. he didn't say 250 then. Maybe he said something else because that does seem high. <laughs> trying to think uh, through that. Maybe, maybe 200. Maybe 150 is what he said. I don't know. He hit 170 last year. So 200. Yeah, Let's say 200. 200. Yeah. Let's say uh, that. Then that's a re- that's reasonable then. Yep, innings eater, but a quality yep. one. Yes, in it, whenever someone is dubbed an innings eater, that just means they suck <laughs> <laughs> because nobody calls a good pitcher an innings eater. No. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Kind of like kind of like gamer. If uh, infielder is a gamer, that means they can't hit for shit. Hey, I'm in, a gamer. <laughs> in, in basketball, if they call a point guard a true point guard, it means they can't score. He just passes pretty good. <laughs> yep, it means they suck at scoring. <laughs> Therefore, not that valuable. And in football, game manager at quarterback is a shitty quarterback on a good team. The game so manager. Go. Yep. So that's, that's, that's your that's your terminologies right there. In, is there a in, hockey one, Ryan? Yeah, I was just about to say if they call if somebody calls a player if they call a player gritty. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it means it means that he does nothing but hit people or an enforcer. Yeah, gritty enforcer. <clears throat> well, enforcers are specifically like guys that fight. Yeah, like and there's just not much of that in the league anymore. But you still have like, like you have like this guy, Ryan Reeves, 
who is one of the worst hockey players I've ever seen in my life. Um, he talks a lot of shit, and he's so bad. <laughs> and he constantly does that, like, oh, they wouldn't be doing that if I was on the ice, and then they do that while he's on the ice, and he does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he probably geez. watched like Bob Probert as a kid, and he's like, "That's gonna be me, <laughs> dog." He's he's the worst man. Like, and it's funny as shit because he's like a, he's like a, he's just a goon. Like he Is just he comes caps? in and hits. He hits and fights. And now, fuck now, no. But like, teams have literally gone and gotten him to like deal with Tom Wilson from the Caps because he just like you know he's a. He's a shit starter, but he's a good player. He scores goals, and you know he he just he's just a rough player. And uh, yeah, like there was this whole thing about how like the Penguins got him. He was like, "I'm gonna solve I'm gonna solve your Tom Wilson problem." And then like his analytics were just like the worst analytics you've ever seen in your fucking life. <laughs> <clears throat> and Wilson had like another had like a 25 goal season. Okay. <laughs> it's it's good. He's he's a running bit and he is the gift that keeps on giving. I Ryan hope he never Reeves. retires. Do the Caps make the playoffs? They're fighting for it, man. It's oh, it's I can't believe that they're actually in the hunt because if you look at them analytically, they're so bad at everything and somehow they are currently holding a wild card spot. What's the record that Ovi's chasing that they're making a big deal about? Is it a certain number of goals or is he trying to Yeah, pass? it's it's most most goals of all time. Okay, yeah, because I got, like, one of my other good buddies, a big Cavs fan, he just keeps saying, I just can't wait for him to break that record so we can finally tear it down and rebuild. Yeah, that's pretty much why they're treading water right now. It's just to keep enough, you know, hope that hopefully he can break the record, and then, yeah, and then yeah. you go full tear down after that, if you need to. I mean, they, they've honestly done a pretty good job of, like, you know, they call it, like, retooling. Where instead of going full rebuild, you just kind of you do some future-minded moves and then some kind of now moves without doing anything drastic, you know? Yeah. Um, they're finally playing some young guys, some guys that have deserved playing time for a while, and they're producing. So it's it's been good to see those guys play. Um, and then they've got this kid uh, that they drafted last year, who's I think going to be like a top player in the league named Ryan Leonard. He's playing at uh, Boston College right now. Hmm. So, yeah, they could be good still. They may not need to do the, the full teardown. Well, there you go. Cool. Yep. Good to hear. I know you're pretty down on them the last couple of years. So. It, yeah, it's it's just, I don't know. I want them to do the full teardown. I'm tired of doing the like half in, half out thing. But I get yeah. why I get why they're doing it. They it's you know, it's not often you never you're gonna have a player that is more than likely legitimately gonna set the most goals of all time record. Like yeah. I think he's less than he's less than fifty away now. Wow. Yeah. yeah so right what there. that's one more season maybe? He hasn't been scoring at that pace lately. Like he'd be lucky. He's gonna have to score a couple more to get to the thirty this year. Uh, so maybe two more seasons. Probably two more seasons, yeah. yeah. But it's still it's still within reach. Like he's gonna be probably forty or forty one when he does it, but somehow he's still durable. I mean, that's been the big thing, man. He just doesn't miss time. Yeah. Like it, it, he's like one of the most durable players of all time, actually. Um I wanna see something. That's they call him the Russian machine. <laughs> And uh, yeah, career games missed. So he has played over fourteen hundred games, and he has only missed thirty five due to injury. That's wild in a nineteen year career. Yeah, that's and insane. He's, and he's thirty eight years old, <laughs> and he drinks Dr Pepper from a Gatorade bottle on the bench. <laughs> The machine. Uh, they posted a picture the other day of him getting on the plane, and he's carrying like a subway sub and like a bo- a bag of hot Cheetos or some shit like that. Like, <laughs> nutrition doesn't exist to this man. Ridiculous. <laughs> they asked him one time what he eats, like what his like pregame meal was, and it's like this. It's like this 
thing that he'd had the team chefs make for him all the time but it's essentially like the most decadent like chicken parmesan dish you've ever had in your life so he eats this like super heavy like meal and then he goes out there and just demolishes people <laughs> <laughs> gotta get that extra weight on yeah it's it's amazing dude it's so funny <laughs> All right. Well, anybody got anything else? It's about nine here, so we can wrap up. But yeah, let's let's get it wrapped up, boys. It's a good episode. Glad to be back. Always. Very very good. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to things ahead. We'll. You guys want to try to? We'll try to in the next coming week or so. We'll try to hammer out a. Uh, see if we can get back on a regular set day. Um, yeah, we're at least trying to maintain like bi-weekly for the season, but we'll see how it. Uh, are Wednesdays generally good for you guys? Because that would be good for me, I think. Yeah, I see no reason why I wouldn't be able to do Wednesdays. Could work yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We'll plan on next Wednesday then. Sweet. All right. Sounds good. So, sound good, gentlemen. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed opening day. Hope you enjoyed all the fantastic ceremonies and uh we hope you guys are as buzzing for this new era of orioles baseball as we are um so tune in again next week we'll talk to you later bye bye